Next on Jonathan Bird's Blue World, a look at the amazing ways animals in the ocean cleverly defend themselves against predators. Hi, I'm Jonathan Bird, and welcome to my world. is a tough environment to live. To survive, every animal must eat, and that means that other animals get eaten. And nobody wants to get eaten, so... Animals in the ocean have come up with a lot of ways to defend themselves. They have spines, venom, speed, maneuverability, and even a smoke screen. Come check out this fish. The lionfish has pretty obvious defenses. Dozens of spines sticking out in all directions. They're not only sharp, but venomous. Very few animals can eat a lionfish, especially when it's fully grown. A sting from one of these spines is extremely painful. The stonefish has much less obvious spines, but they're considerably more venomous. A sting from one of these spines will send a diver to the hospital. Fortunately, these well-camouflaged fish pose no threat to divers if we don't touch them. Stingrays only have a single spine. It's located at the base of the tail and can be pointed and jabbed at a threat from above. Since sharks love to eat stingrays, the venomous spine is used to jab sharks that come too close. Every once in a while, an unfortunate swimmer steps on a stingray and gets stung, but for the most part, stingrays are not at all aggressive towards people. In the Cayman Islands, they're downright friendly. Fish aren't the only animals in the ocean with spines. Sea urchins have many sharp spines with brittle tips. If an animal gets skewered by one of these spines, the end breaks off below the skin and causes pain for months. Long-spined urchins are so well protected that sometimes small fish even use them for safety, hiding between the spines where no predator would dare try to get them. Spines work so well for urchins that some of their close relatives, the sea stars, have spines too. The spines on the crown of thorn sea star are every bit as sharp and painful as those on an urchin. Believe me, I learned that the hard way. Sea cucumbers are closely related to sea urchins and sea stars, but most sea cucumbers have no spines at all for defense. The sea cucumber has an even more amazing and disgusting way of getting rid of predators. When attacked, many species of sea cucumbers eviscerate from their mouth a gooey mess called cuvarian tubules. These sticky, stringy organs presumably give a predator something unappealing to eat, and they're often accompanied by the secretion of a poison. This combination prevents sea cucumbers from being a very popular food item in the ocean. The sea cucumber can retract the tubules and replace the lost ones in a few weeks and be ready to eviscerate again. Some forms of defense are just simple common sense. These fish are staying within the protection of a branching coral. They feed on plankton that the current brings by, but they don't venture very far from the safety of the coral. Other fish are too big to feed on plankton and must go out of the protection of the reef if they want to find food. Their defense is to keep an eye peeled and be ready to zoom into the reef if a threat comes along. Being alert is a key defense mechanism. 
When it comes to a good defense, nothing beats being really fast. These sailfish can swim 60 miles per hour. They're top predators in the open ocean, and even though sharks could theoretically eat them, sharks can't catch them. The sailfish are attacking a small school of sardines. Schooling is a defensive move used by fish in open water where there's no place to hide. This big school of jacks stays together in a large group which helps protect the fish because it makes it harder for a predator to focus on a single fish. It's sort of a safety in numbers strategy. But what happens at night? Many fish sleep safely at night by hiding in holes in the reef. For the most part, they're safe. The parrotfish creates a mucus cocoon around itself every night. The bubble protects the fish from annoying parasitic isopods, the equivalent of an underwater mosquito. This sleeping parrotfish has a nice bubble that's doing its job. Look closely and you can see the isopod on the bubble like a fly on a screen door. Nearby on the nighttime reef, an octopus is out on the prowl hunting for sleeping fish. It sticks its tentacles into the reef to startle a sleeping fish and hopes the fish will come out into its web of arms it has wrapped around the coral head. But how does the octopus defend itself against bigger fish and fearsome underwater photographers with bright video lights? It squirts an ink cloud. The ink cloud is a distraction to focus the predator's attention while the octopus makes a quick getaway. On a reef in the Philippines, a tiny octopus barely larger than a bottle cap is hunting for a meal. It's a blue-ringed octopus, one of the most dangerous animals in the world packing a venom 10,000 times more deadly than cyanide. One bite from the blue ring octopus will kill a human in only minutes. Reaching into cracks and holes, the octopus hunts for shrimp or small fish to eat. A goby boldly protects its burrow. To a nearby scorpionfish, the octopus looks like a nice, bite-sized snack. The octopus doesn't see the well-camouflaged scorpionfish watching and waiting to make its move. The scorpionfish strikes and gets more than he bargained for. Within only a fraction of a second, the octopus bites back and the scorpionfish spits it out. The scorpionfish will have a sore mouth for days, if it even survives. It turns out that the blue ring octopus does not make a very good snack after all. Some animals are not blessed with spines, venom, or even the ability to move quickly. Crabs and lobsters have a tough exoskeleton that makes them very hard to eat. As well, they have powerful claws that can pinch and crush. When a threat comes near, a lobster doesn't hesitate to put up those claws and use them. A hermit crab ups the defense by using a snail shell as a portable house to provide an extra layer of protection. Some hermit crabs take it even another step further, placing venomous stinging anemones on their shell to further increase their defensive positions. This crab might be slow, but she is very hard to eat. Even a lowly scallop has a defense. It has no legs for walking or fins for swimming. But when its arch enemy, the sea star, approaches and makes a move, the scallop opens its shells wide and claps them together, squirting a jet of water out of its mantle. 
Welks are another predator that try to take advantage of the scallop, but they're given the squirt treatment too. Take that, Welks! No matter how vulnerable an animal in the ocean might look, you can bet that it has a strategy to survive. Spines, venom, speed, a smoke screen, or maybe even a squirt gun. There are many ways that animals have learned to defend themselves in the blue world. <laughs> 